On the African continent, former President John Mahama of Ghana's opposition NDC has made a historic return to power in what's been called one of Africa's most transparent elections. We now cross live to Accra, where the AU and ECOWAS election observation mission are addressing the press on the election results. Over the last eight years, I commend him for his leadership, mediation efforts, and regional integration initiatives on behalf of the community, including during his selfless service as a two-term chairman of the authority of Yokoas, head of state and government. This is done in Accra, the ninth day of December, 2024. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your statement. And now we'll hear the statement for His Excellency, the Head of Mission for the Commonwealth Observer Mission. Uh, the media, if you could adjust your microphones. This is the interim statement from the Commonwealth Observer Group. Good morning, Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the media, fellow observers, ladies and gentlemen, and the people of Ghana. Thank you for honoring our invitation to come to this joint Observer Group press conference. The Commonwealth is honored to have been invited to observe Ghana's 2024 general elections following the pre-election assessment mission in October and the subsequent invitation from the Electoral Commission of Ghana. The Commonwealth Secretary General, the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, King's Council, constituted our group to observe Ghana's ninth presidential and parliamentary elections since the transition to multi-party democratic rule in 1992. We arrived on the 29th November and will depart Accra on the 13th December. As chair, I'm honored to lead a group of 16 eminent persons drawn from across 13 Commonwealth member countries and from all the five regions of the Commonwealth. They are diplomats, and experts in election management, law, gender, inclusion, youth, as well as the media. The group is independent of the Secretariat. Our role is to offer an independent and impartial analysis of the electoral process, taking account of all factors which may impact or impinge on the overall credibility of an election. I now have the privilege to present our preliminary findings, which are based on our engagement with the cross-section of stakeholders. Our final report with key recommendations will be submitted to the Secretary General and shared with the Government of the Republic of Ghana, as well as other key stakeholders and to the wider public. Let me begin with a pre-election environment. For a nuanced understanding and assessment of the pre-election environment, our observers met with the Electoral Commission, EC, of Ghana, candidates and representatives of political parties and civil society. We commend the Electoral Commission and the political parties for their pre-engagement through the Inter-Party Advisory Committee, IPAC, in their commitment to transparency in these proceedings by making it accessible and available to the public. We applaud political parties for signing the Peace Pact 
on the 28th of November. This is a testament of Ghana's continued commitment to stability and peace and its recognition as a stable democracy. The professionalism and preparedness of the National Elections Electric Elect Elect Security Elections Security Task Force is commendable. We had significant engagement with the public service, with the police service, and we were assured of their commitment to peace and de-escalation tactics to ensure that Ghanaians were able to exercise their right to vote in a peaceful manner. We commend the proficiency and confidence demonstrated by the Inspector General of Police and the, as the Chief Law Enforcer for elections in Ghana. We know that the civil society in Ghana is robust and vibrant. The coalitions of organizations that came together across national and regional networks, working on civic and voter education, media training and gender mainstreaming were remarkable and impressive. We observed the last rallies of two main parties in Accra. Although the rallies were at close proximity, the campaigns were conducted in a peaceful atmosphere. The fundamental rights of candidates, political parties and supporters to assemble and campaign seems to have been observed. Our teams were deployed in 10 to 10 regions across the country, including northern region, northwest and northeast, Volta region, western and central regions, Ashanti region, and greater Accra. In these locations, we observed the pre-election preparations and engaged with district election officials, local chiefs and police commanders to gain a deeper appreciation of the electoral process. On special voting, we observed special voting on the 2nd December 2024. Ghana is to be commended for this initiative, which allows those performing election duty to exercise their franchise. Polling was conducted smoothly in a peaceful environment at polling stations observed. The polling officials were meticulous in following the procedures. On election day, specifically pre-election, pre-poll and opening of poll procedures, the polling officials followed pre-poll and open procedures diligently, following polling stations largely opened on time. However, some stations opened slightly late due to a number of reasons including the malfunctioning of the biometric verification devices and the late setting up of the polling stations. On the conduct of the polls, voting was conducted in a peaceful and orderly environment at most polling stations. However, we are saddened by the reports of violence which resulted in death and injury during these elections. The Commonwealth Observer Group condemns this act of violence and calls on the respective authorities to investigate and bring the perpetrators to justice. The layout of most polling stations, which were outside in the open, ensured secrecy of the vote for the most part, though in some cases, the positioning of the voting booths could have potentially compromised secrecy. Polling officials must be commended for conducting their duties with professionalism and transparency. Participation and inclusion. We observed the participation of female and male voters, as well as polling officials, although most presiding officers were predominantly male. We observed that persons with disabilities and the elderly were given priority at the visually, uh, that the visually impaired voters were provided tactile jackets at some polling stations. Polling officials also provided sign language interpretation at some polling stations. This must be commended. However, we noted accessibility challenges at some polling stations with stairs. We also observed that voting booths were too high for some voters on wheelchairs. Adjustable voting booths would have been helpful in this regard. More needs to be done to ensure that PWDs exercise their franchise with dignity and in accordance with the law. Political party agents. Political party agents were present at most polling stations they conducted themselves in a professional manner in most polling stations observed. Citizens observers, we interacted with international and citizen observers at various polling stations. In the close of count, there were no queues at the close of polls at 5 p.m. at most polling stations we observed. The polling officials followed closing and counting procedures with transparency and professionalism. 
we observed that the counting of votes continued after dark in most polling stations. Flashlights and other forms of lighting were provided to assist with this process. We followed the results process from polling stations to collation centers. We noted some logistical challenges, such as the transportation of ballot boxes at some collation centers, and recommend some reforms to ensure order during the collation exercise. Media. Ghana's media is characterized by vibrant, diverse, and relatively free outlets across traditional and digital platforms. Despite facing challenges such as financial constraints and disinformation, the media landscape remains robust. Although relatively free, media ownership continues to affect the quality and ethics of journalism. We commend the media, including radio, TV, and print, for providing extensive coverage of the elections and related issues. We especially commend the state broadcaster for their efforts to maintain balance in airtime allocation.